okay, so is any of this of any real value, or does it just provide a source of puzzles for a certain kind of nerd? <laughs> After all, there probably aren't any islands where some of the inhabitants always tell the truth and others always lie. But in fact, exactly this situation did interest French lawyers in the 16th century in the context of examining suspected witches. The theology of the time indicated that witches were possessed by the devil and either always lied or, always, or, or at least often lied. The lawyers worked out that if a witch always lies, then clever questioning can elicit the information that is sought. But if they lie only some of the time and are trying to mislead you, then they can answer your questions in such a way that you can't rely on their evidence at all. A much earlier court case had presented a logical paradox in court. The story is that the Greek philosopher Protagoras, who lived in the fifth century BCE, gave legal training to the student Euathlus with the terms that half the fee was payable in advance and the balance when Euathlus won his first court case. There are different versions of the precise condition. After completing his training, Euathlus delayed taking on any cases. And eventually Protagoras, impatient for the balance of his fee, sued for it. So Protagoras argued that if he won the case, the ruling would require him to be paid, while if he lost the case, Euathlus, having won it, would then owe him the money under the terms of the original agreement. On the other hand, Euathlus argued that if his fee were successful, then by the judgment, he wouldn't have to pay, while if he lost the case under the terms of the agreement, there would be nothing to pay. We seem to have a paradox. Whatever judgment is made, there are convincing reasons why Protagoras should get the money, but equally strong arguments that he shouldn't. Perhaps the correct judgment would be in favour of the student Euathlus, which should allow Protagoras to sue again on the grounds that having won his case, Euathlus now definitely owes the fee. That would at least follow the important legal principle that the more court cases there are, and the more work for lawyers, the better. Incidentally, though one might have thought that an argument of this type would appeal particularly to those with mathematical inclinations, Protagoras disapproved of the study of mathematics, saying the subject matter is unknowable and the terminology distasteful. Again, this paradox may seem more like an entertaining mind twister than a real legal problem. But it was in fact cited as a precedent in a real court case in Ohio in 1946. A physician called Jones was charged with carrying out an illegal abortion. The only evidence implicating him came from the, the woman, Harris, on whom he had allegedly carried out the operation. Now, the law specified, firstly, that a woman who voluntarily arranged an abortion was an accomplice in, to the illegal act. So if Jones were found guilty, then Harris must also be guilty. And secondly, that someone cannot be convicted solely on the word of a criminal accomplice. These conditions set up a paradox. If Jones is guilty, then Harris is an accomplice and her evidence cannot be used against Jones who must therefore be acquitted, in which case Harris's evidence is valid and Jones should be convicted. The judge, in fact, ordered that if the jury find Jones guilty, then they must, by law, find Harris to have been his accomplice, which put the jury in the position of being unable to reach a non-paradoxical verdict. Nevertheless, the jury convicted, and the Court of Appeal concurred, noting that Jones's argument that Harris's evidence should be disregarded because she was an accomplice, actually presupposed that he was guilty. 